the Prison City Podcast. When the bars go up, you're officially locked in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prison City Podcast. We are back. I'm your unofficial host, Patrick W. Cutler, and we got one hell of a show for you tonight. I'm talking about demonic possession as we continue our Halloween Oktoberfest theme. Nothing but scary stuff this month. It's been a lot of fun. We did witchcraft and we did uh, ghosts and stuff. And uh, now we're on to uh, demonic possession. I got my two favorite stories. Um, one has to do with the actual exorcist true story. And then I have another one um, that happened in the United States as well. That's really pretty freaking messed up. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. And we're, we're going to get into some really creepy stuff here. Um yeah, so with that said, <clears throat> I've had some bizarre things happen to me this week. Mahone's had some bizarre things happen to him. We'll get into those stories too and, and how creepy things are turning here as uh, we head in to, uh, towards the middle of October here. And so let's let's just go to uh, uh, Mahone's right out the bat here. How are things on your planet? Uh, things are very, very great. I mean, just I can't think of a better word to say. It's lovely on my planet. Um, no, before I typically like to say something smart assy, but um, I'm actually going to say something serious and from the heart here for a second. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Pat Cutler and then also both Kelly and Matt. Um, they have been working their ass off on this Redgate film and a lot of sacrifices made. And they are almost done with it. So for anyone who doesn't understand the type of work and the type of sacrifice you have to put into that, uh, it's a lot. It's, it's hard to really put into words. So um, big congratulations to everyone involved. That's a ton of work and you guys should be super proud. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a crazy, uh, crazy journey. We actually should do an entire podcast episode on just that film because we did one a long time ago. Like we did one a long time ago. We should actually do another episode on Redgate because it's been fucking nuts. It's been nuts. But, uh, yeah, thank you for that. And uh, we'll go to uh, Matt. Uh, what's happened up there in the, uh, your upstairs room with that uh, Jason mask? Um, actually, uh, backstory, that Jason mask is actually Kelly's, given to him by Moose Tilly, Jim Tilly himself. And it is signed by Warrington Gillette, who played Jason in Jason part number two, which is ironic because Jason uh, didn't wear a mask in Jason part two. He wore a uh, potato <laughs> sack or paper bag over his head, as we all know. So uh, it's kind of funny. Anyway, that's actually Kelly's. I just thought it was cool because it's October 13th. So Yeah, that's... So, uh... I'll say that's really pretty freaking cool. And it gives me an idea. I wanted to figure out what I can do with the remaining amount of money I have from my eBay gift cards, uh, online escorts, prostitution scam that I got into. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> again, that, that episode, I wish Mahomes had been on that. It was a really fun episode. And uh, yeah, now I'm thinking maybe I could get a signed Michael Myers mask or something this week and have it here before uh, Halloween. Basically, basically, I don't know if you hear that whole thing, but basically she had me buy $500 with the eBay gift cards. And um and again, I, I held them, I held them, I held them. I was like, I got to figure out how this scam works. So I bought the cards and I held, I held, I held. And then I finally, finally figured the whole scam out. Um, it was crazy. It was a crazy episode. She had her fake pimp, like texting me and shit. And it was fucking weird. <laughs> Sounds cool. Sounds honestly like on the up and up. I don't know yeah. what, what's, what's wrong with that business transaction. But I've been buying the weirdest shit off of eBay with those cards. So far, I'm down to like 170 bucks. So maybe a signed autograph Jason mask or something might be on my uh, list next. So far, I've got an entire Joker, like the original, not the original, but you know, the Heath Leather Joker? Yeah. Uh, I got that entire fucking costume with the green hair dye and everything for Halloween. So that's, that's, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's going to be super badass. I'm just thinking how I can incorporate the end of that, that end of the creep show the final night. We'll have to figure something out, but it's going to be a badass wow. fucking costume. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Kelly, what's going on down there? Oh, I'm glad I finally get to speak. I felt like I was in North Korea there for a second. <laughs> um, yeah, that that Jason mask, uh, Tilly gave it to me, and I, I knew it immediately. I was like, yeah, this doesn't come in until part three. It was like my wife giving birth to a black baby or something. I was like, thank, thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> 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 
Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Mahoney, for the Red Gate um, props, man. I was just telling Tilly last night outside of our apartment here, I said, man, we have been working on this thing for over a year now. You know, that's a lot of time to put into it. Pat's put the bulk of the time into it. I feel sometimes like the family guy joke where I'm Ben Affleck on the coach. I'm like, hey, uh, am I putting my name on that too? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's been over a year and it's the movie's just completely different. Even from the first cut we watched, I don't remember like January or something. Even from that cut, the movie is so, so drastically different. And it's, it's honestly on its, you know, it, it's on its toes where you watch it and I, I start getting nervous and shit in the first half an hour. Like it's a real fucking horror movie. And it's like, wow, man, we got, we got something here and um, it's just getting better and better. That's great, man. That's a, uh... Like I said, it's a lot of work. And for the people who don't really understand it, like that you put it into good perspective, a year is a year is a long time to do anything, whether it's a job you love or a job you hate. And when you're trying to create something that has never been done before, a story that's all yours, that um, <laughs> it's just a ton of work and a ton of back work and all that, you know, we've talked about it in earlier episodes, the editing and all that shit that goes into it. So it's really yeah. cool, man. I'm, I'm excited to see it. And I think it, you know, it's a, uh, a horror movie as you said we're in that time of year so i'll tell you um i'll tell you what happened to me that was a little weird after the episode obviously i talked about ghost stories and shit this this past time and so i have i have a beard so i have a trimmer that's fairly new i, I it was a christmas gift from somebody last christmas and it works totally fine no problem that I, I use it once a week to trim my beard so after this show last week um it's you know what we finished late at night i go to bed and i leave it on my shower kind of on top of the shower because i trim my beard before i shower and then all the extra stuff gets washed off whatever so all of a sudden there's this huge crack in the middle of the night this is again same night we do the podcast and my trimmers turned on in the shower on the floor just going nuts and so i was like ah, that's, i don't know maybe, like i just thought weird maybe an electrical glitch so then I, I put it back up. It turns back on again at like 2.15 in the morning. And I, so I was like, this is really weird. So I set it on the ground, just, just like, I don't want to deal with this. I'll do, I'll do it in the morning. That must be some sort of something. It continues to go off at different intervals. So one time it goes off for like 10 seconds, turns off. The next time it's like five minutes, turns off. Um, and so... I looked it up online and some people are like, yeah, it's kind of common. You just have to let the battery drain, charge it up and we'll do it again. The battery, it did this on and off. And for one, like one night, it was on the whole night. I finally undid the head. So you couldn't, it wasn't making this crazy rattling and wrapped it in a towel so I could sleep. <laughs> it did it the whole night, the whole night. So I was like, okay, this thing's gotta be dead. And then five days, it goes on and off for five days. Battery, it, it says the battery's drained right so then i'm like okay i need to trim my beard this is what a weird thing to happen i plug it in for a whole entire day and it won't turn on now holy shit that is fucking crazy that is really fucking weird right like i spent just given the timing of what we were talking about it again you know we talked last time like the adult in me was like it's just whatever maybe some water got into the battery or the fact it stayed on that long and it just would turn on and no matter there was the time after the like five days when it was going no matter if i hit the on off button or not it would just keep going yeah, fucking weird so, really so there's weird. other stories like that that you read out there that like other people have had that happen or yeah but not to the, not like to the length people are like yeah it'll do it for a day let the battery drain and recharge it and everything will be fine it's just kind of a quirk and it, like I said, it was like a week ordeal, basically. Wow, that's fucked up. And now it doesn't fucking work at all. So that's cool. Well, my similar ghost story this week is, uh, you guys remember our priest growing up, Father Porter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just had to block him on Facebook and Facebook Messenger because he wouldn't stop messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so, but so I, you're I don't... the ghost. You're <laughs> ghosting him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't think it's him. I think it's one of those bot things because it's like they just say weird shit and it's like he has my number. It's like, why are you trying to call me on Facebook Messenger? You know, so I guarantee it's not him, but <laughs> had to block him up. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll go through. I'll go through my story really quick. It's kind of a quick one. So, yeah, a couple days off after last week's podcast, I get up out of bed, and this kind of has to do if you've ever explored uh, research like parallel realities and quantum physics and stuff, and how there's a multiple set of realities, and how we have doppelgangers that could come between different realities. Just that whole thing or whatever. I think everyone's had something similar to what I'm about to say. It's just really just kind of hits you fucking really weird when it happens. So I get up. Um, I go to the front back window uh and you know there's the basketball court in the backyard and there's the alley and there's a gate by the alley and everything and i'm sitting there drinking a water because i always chug a glass of water in the morning i've done that for like over 10 years now and i look out there and my parents black ford cars parked right behind the gate where they would usually park it if they're going to unload something or something was going to happen but i was just i thought it was fucking weird because like well why would they be parking it there but i was kind of like oh whatever whatever floats Butch's boat, I guess, whatever. So I chug my water. So, so I distinctly saw it and I thought about it. I go to the front of the house and open the big bay windows because I always like to let the light in or whatever. And that same fucking Ford black car is sitting right outside. I was like, no fucking way. So I was like, okay, well, what did, what's the car out and back then? And I run, I run back there. This is how it all happened within like a minute. I run all the way back there and it's fucking gone. So like... <laughs> Oh, so that was Butch's car that you saw? It was the black, yeah, the black Ford car. It's very distinct, too. Like, you can recognize it. Yeah, because you told me that story, and I, I I, guess I didn't realize it was Butch's you were seeing, because I thought it might have been two different cars or whatever. But, yeah, that's even more <clears throat> fucked up. Is that? Yeah. Fun. Yeah, that's weird. I don't like that. So were the parents, were the folks home at the time? Were they awake? What it was It was pretty early in the morning, so I was, like, the only person up. I was just getting up and, you know. Yeah, nobody, no, but nobody had gone anywhere. All the doors were locked. Nobody had left. Um, and you know, you know, you know the exact spot I'm talking about behind uh, the basketball hoop and everything. Like, yeah. no, there's nobody that drives down there because it's a dead end. There's nowhere to park. There's nobody goes there. If someone does go there, there's only one house that has no kids. They go, they had their own driveway off to the side. So nobody would just park there. And it was definitively that black Ford car. It was just so fucking weird. <laughs> it sounds like the uh, start to a, uh comedy movie where you live with your parents and they're like okay he's out the back window pull around pull around pull around <laughs> uh, he was fucking with the walk through the- <laughs> dude where's my car yeah, yeah well that's something i started thinking maybe it was another car or something but um it was parked like there wasn't there's was nobody in it there's there wasn't yeah it was just weird <laughs> well pat didn't you think last year when we did the creep show the uh, video that i made you know that little video that you during the uh, stage show, didn't you say that it changed, or you, at least you thought it changed? That was really no. fucked up. No. I thought, because uh, Matt has his video, and it's a really badass video he put together, and if you're an actor on stage, you have to watch that video, which most people play that part at the beginning of the stage part of the horror film, where you, uh, the, horror, the, horror, the Halloween play, where you're in there, and then you sit down, and part of it, you watch this creepy video, and I watched it a bunch that first weekend because I was always out front. I always did that a lot. And then the second weekend, again, I was had some drinks in me. And honestly, I, was, I had, had COVID at the time, looking back at it. And uh, here I am watching this video the second week. And that Friday, it looked fuck. There's shit in there I saw that I didn't see before. I still swear. <laughs> like it was fucking weird. Like it's there's shit that I saw that I swear I'd never seen before in that video. Yeah, but no one else saw it because I remember Pat yelling at the cast, it fucking changed. And like all 10 of us are just sitting there like, what? We don't think it did, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you actually have a YouTube video with you talk about that. I, I put it on uh, part of mine. I'm sure you got one too. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. We should be posting those YouTube videos. I should be posting those from last year. Yeah, we got to start uh, marketing Creep Show, definitely. Yeah, I, but we should, yeah, I, if, you have a po- if you have a video from last year, we should start posting our own videos for our own YouTube page stuff onto the, the Cutler Bros Facebook page because that just brings back that old, it's just fun to go back and look what we did last year and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I filmed yeah. the whole thing last year. I walked through the whole thing. It's like a 10-minute yeah. video, so. Yeah, we should start posting that stuff, actually. Um, but anyways, uh. Well, let's get down to business here, folks. Um, okay, let's see. So here's what we're here to talk about here tonight. Let me share my screen here. We're talking about freaking demonic possession. Here's uh, This is off of Pinterest, just a bunch of different photos here if you want to check these out. Um, some of these are fake. Some of these are, this one looks fake, but a lot of these are real. This one's real. I mean, a lot of these are pretty uh, real looking. 
demonic possession. This is probably one of the scariest ones for me is a good demonic possession film because it just there's so many true stories of these things happening. And um, it's just really, really fucking creepy. All these fucking photos. Uh, this is a photo. This guy, this guy right here. I'll pull this one up. This guy right here, um, he's a brother of Hermes. He does uh, 30, he's done 35,000 evil spirits through his uh, history of his uh, exorcist. And what his main strategy is, he takes the body of the person possessed and he uh, douses it with mud and stuff. Then he puts it in the, puts it on the ground. Then he lights a ring of fire around it. So I guess that's one way to get it done. And then it looks like he stabs a person in the heart with a uh, stake. No. <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah, that would certainly end everything, you would imagine. <laughs> but I mean, if you have like, imagine, you know, you talk about like the points record for LeBron James in the NBA. And you imagine this guy probably has the exorcist record here with 35,000 evil spirits, wouldn't you say? I would say Brother Hermes is the greatest of all time. The goat, <laughs> as people are saying, in terms of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's some more of these pictures. Um, we're just going through here. Um, it, the thing I found interesting, if you, you go on Google and stuff, and you try to like, like I've tried like all, like half a day, tried finding all these stories I know I've found before. It's like they try to all hide it or they only go to the main exorcist story because every single article is on the main exorcist story. Um, hey, so Annabelle, if you just want to scroll up just one hair. Oh, right here? Yeah, that's the real Annabelle doll right there. Yeah, let's go up to the top. I'll show you this photo up here. So if you watch the horror film Annabelle, this is where, um, yeah, that's where it's actually stored and everything in yeah. their basement. That's the actual photo of the Annabelle doll right there. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that she's just a Raggedy Ann doll. Is she? Yes, that's all. That's it. Painted on face. That's freaking really weird. Um, yeah, the con the Conjuring, the first one was really creepy. I thought the second one was really creepy, and then the third one was um, it was kind of okay. It was still kind of cool, but it used a lot of special effects stuff, so it was kind of okayish. But uh, the Conjuring series is, is one of my favorite. It's probably my currently my favorite new horror horror series. That and uh, the Purge is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so let's get into this here. Let me, you know, let me stop my share on my screen here. Good God. Hopefully not one of these is porn hub. <laughs> 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 that like would be 50,000 <laughs> tabs <That'd>, up. <laughs> that would be a pretty weird transition to go from <laughs> <laughs> what we were looking at for people listening not on YouTube. is just a bunch of pictures of examples of demonic possession. So imagine, you know, play along with me if you will so you go from that which is terrifying to just a crazy greasy porn hub site <laughs> he was like 13 pages deep on it <laughs> just a second here now, now that you're giving me some ideas let me look this up what if they have demonic possession porn videos oh jesus Christ. <laughs> i mean the odds are very high that they do yes <laughs> what are you eating mahoney <laughs> <laughs> Um, I got some uh, tater tots and chicken nuggets, you know, because I'm apparently a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't show these obviously because I don't want to be taken down on YouTube, but I'll read I'll read some titles for you guys really quick. <laughs> Steve Holmes doing an exorcism with his dick. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Brainwash mom, son, fox fucked by under a trance. <laughs> <laughs> wow. several black guys appropriating a white bitch Jeez. <laughs> jesus h there was some stats on pornhub earlier today where they're saying like the most searched word on pornhub per state is usually something like asian or ebony or something you know normal like that montana's was librarian <laughs> God. Uh, see, Washington's was Governor Inslee. Just joking. <laughs> Washington's was Governor Inslee. That's <laughs> weird. I mean, I'm down in San Diego, so I'm not sure about that. But <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like that one picture. It's a priest, and like not a real priest. Obviously, but like three nuns and then some girl laying on a bed and he has his ding out 
performing performing exorcism with his dick. <laughs> Dude, if if you can uh, if you can think of it, it's out there in the world. You know, I, with seven eight billion people, anything you can think of it, it's happened or it's gonna happen. You know, I I think that's scarier in my mind than it actually is. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I better not hear that through the wall later. Cuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my c- mind. Just, <laughs> oh, you want this exorcism now, do you? I just heard it at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. <laughs> oh, man, see, I, I like I. <laughs> I'm so worried about demonic possession that I don't even want to look that up and like tempt it. Be like, oh, these guys think it's funny to role play about possession, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like they're super serious and going to church and like she's possessed. All right, hold on a second. He pulls out his wiener. <laughs> All right. That's like Matt. What's that British uh, that comedy clip that you like? She's she's dying of cancer. Oh, hold on. He pulls out his dinghy. Oh, come, come on her tits. It's like, um, it doesn't even make yeah. sense. What the hell? Yeah, it's not even that funny to me. I just copy it all the time. Uh, what the hell is that called? Jeez. I think it's called come on her tits. Like, hey. Uh, I know, but the, the fucking troop or whatever. Oh, I can't remember. You'd have to ask Kyle Gillette. Oh, the comedy <laughs> troop or whatever. Oh, is that yeah, God. Oh, uh, the hall boys hallway boys or something like that i think this was i think this was different because the the hall the in one the you're talking kids. kids in the hall yeah that was kids in the hall yeah that's the call that was american and that definitely wasn't very x-rated like that oh. all right let's go through some uh, uh legal things here first guys uh uh in the court according to the court in texas supreme court uh exorcism is protected by law uh, they found that a girl who had some injuries suffered during an exorcism, she was only 17, um, that um, constitutionally they can perform an exorcism even if some injuries happen to the person that is being performed on, which is interesting. <clears throat> um, the lower court ruled the other way. It was the, uh, the Pleasant Glade Assembly of God's First Amendment rights regarding freedom of religion did not prevent the church from being held liable for mental distress triggered by a hyper-spiritualistic environment. As one of the oddest court rulings I think I've ever heard in my life, but <laughs> yep. I I guess I didn't imagine there was ever any ruling related to like demonic possession and exorcism in in the law book anywhere. So how about that? Uh, uh, so with that said, I'm gonna cut over to um, I'll go to this one first, but uh, let me actually let me cut over to it right now. Um, uh, the entire you guys ever seen the movie The Exorcism of uh, Emily Rose? Mm-hmm. That is actually entirely. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the clip here. Um, here it is, right here. So, there we go. So let me, let me let me pull it up here. There's a picture. There's a picture of the priest at court. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Not there. Uh, so there were priests that went to court over that. And this is like in freaking. Uh, um, this is in freaking. Uh, Germany or whatever. Let me see what the terrifying, terrifying movie. And for yeah. any any fans of uh, the TV show Dexter, Deb is the star of the movie. I was to say, I, I keep seeing her there. That's so weird. Yeah, that movie. Uh, that movie. After I watched it, that made a made for a sleepless night. There, I remember that. I haven't so, seen it. Here, here is the photo of it. Let me pull this photo up. It's good. I think it's a PG thirteen movie too. It's, so. it's yeah. I was uh, actually watched it from my. Uh, oh, so they don't perform uh, the exorcism with a priest's dick. <laughs> no, they, they they unfortunately they don't perform with the priests. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> not uh, not in the Disney version. No. Here's a, so here's a picture of the the parents. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, there's the two priests right there. So they, they have permission to go get permission for the diocese and everything. And since uh, Emily Rose ends up dying, the actual movie is based like Spoiler. a spoiler. Yeah. It's a 19 year old, and I don't even remember how it ends. The girl in this one, though, uh, she's 23 and she ends up dying in real life. But uh, they they went on forever and ever and ever. And it was like a really big deal. The priests were convicted of first degree manslaughter. 
And then they got six months in jail, which is kind of a weird sentence for manslaughter. And then it got uh, delayed or whatever, and they got probation. They ended up not serving any time or anything. But yeah, it's it was a, a crazy story. The the exorcism of Emily Rose. I haven't seen that so, one. Guys. I, yeah. know, I know we're going to talk about demonic uh, possession, our thoughts on it and stuff. But uh, how much of this do you think? is like the girl just had something that nowadays we would call ADHD or something like that and you know or, or autism and they're trying to hold her down and you know our brains are powerful things and she just loses it and then just loses control of her nervous system because they're holding her down and shit I mean do you think like she's really possessed by the devil or do you think that could definitely be like just a, a human thing that like well you're fucking with her for however many hours you said of course somebody that's not like set right in their head is going to implode and and maybe you die you know so um first i'll, I'll cut to um this is like modern day and i can't say of all time but modern day when it comes to um uh priests and stuff when it comes to exorcisms uh, I'll, I'll show this up here really quick there is a international association of exorcists within the catholic church and again you don't have to be catholic to uh, perform an exorcism but um with the catholic church you get more, um, I would say, more safer. It's more of a safer avenue, I would say. Like, uh, I say, if you go outside the Catholic Church, you're kind of dealing with whoever. But uh, the reason I say that is because there's 250 people, priests, that meet like once a year. And for the Catholic Church to perform an exorcism, they go through um, out of all, out of 400 cases. And these 400 cases are checked by doctors, psychiatrists, everything. Out of 400 cases, they will only actually perform an exorcism in two or three of them. Where in other situations, um, you, you just don't really know. So you, there's a really long process of proof they have to collect and they have to get permission from the bishop or uh, of their local bishop. So it's not just like they can just go out there and just perform an exorcism and do whatever. And that's probably why these people in Texas got in trouble because they just kind of, it seems like they're just kind of like freelancing it and say, oh, she's possessed. It's just throw it down and <laughs> but, right because sometimes they're just bad bad kids or fucked up kids or something you know uh we were all school teachers we all saw that at one point or another but it doesn't mean they're necessarily possessed by the devil <laughs> i do th i think you make a good point to like in the earlier times when i feel like you know exorcisms were probably much more commonplace back in the 1700s 1600s where people just didn't know like what a mental diagnosis was and they probably thought the stuff that i think is interesting though the ones that you that kind of get made into movies are the ones you see where all of a sudden they start speaking different languages or you know like stuff they they have never been around or have never heard or start ripping off bible verses and maybe they you know don't come from a super religious family those are the ones that are like always catch my attention but mm -hmm. to your point i mean yeah there could be some sort of psychosomatic like break that probably happened a lot before people actually understood like, no, this is just, this is part of who they are. This <laughs> it doesn't mean they're possessed yeah. by a demon. Yeah. No, no pun intended. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, uh, I think though, uh, one of the, one of the things I read earlier today is like, they say one of the signs to test if, if, if there's something, you know, if they are actually possessed by a demon is to, um, are they speaking a language they don't know? And the language is usually Latin. Uh, those are all those are one of the two uh, things to test. Are they speaking a language they don't know? And can they start to state things about like a person that there's no possible way they could possibly know that a person or situation? Those are the two things that stand out the most when it comes to like connection. But the main thing is, is the speaking of a different language is like the biggest dead giveaway. With the, the reason that Emily Rose one was so uh, controversial is she was she'd be checked out and they had this thing called spear uh spear religiousality or something like that where you have you're so convinced that you're possessed by a demon or something that you almost just bring it on yourself and you become it and um that was why the emily Lewis one was so interesting because um a lot of it they weren't really sure and they felt like maybe she wasn't but it would I don't know, it's really weird she might it, it's on that brink of she might have had a mental illness or she might have really been possessed by something and if you have an end, and she ended up what she ended up dying was from starvation and dehydration because she refused to uh eat or drink so that's the point where they should have had her checked into a hospital you know that's how she died so you know it was just it was just an interesting one um 
Yeah, well, um, so I watch a, uh, we're into paranormal bullshit, you know, Ghost Hunter, uh, the, the hell the guy's names. God, I have to ask. Fuck, we watch them all the time. They're on uh, YouTube. Anyway, so they did a uh, bit on this uh, Emily Rose, and they played, you know, you can take it at fit face value if you want but they played some of the tapes from the exorcism because it wasn't too long ago but they recorded freaking everything so they played some of the tapes and you could hear like quote unquote emily rose or slash the demon yes talking. yes that's on i actually was watching that video earlier today yeah you know and like i said you could take it at face value but it's very creepy very i guess convincing you know what i'm saying if you want to, if you really think that there's something going on there, it's very, uh, I don't know, it's just chilling, I guess. Mm, yeah, <clears throat> I've heard, I too have heard that just because I'm like, I'm fascinated by it and also terrified by it. And it's funny, not funny, I don't know if funny is the right word, but it's interesting that like, that's, it's been like exorcism has been going on for a long time. I mean, they talk about in the bible jesus driving out demons like that's that's been going on for as long as you know religion has been a thing so it's really interesting i mean to kelly's point some of it probably could have just been ignorant people not understanding the brain as well as we do now but the thing like and you see it in the movies and it's like and obviously not everything in the movies is true but all the stuff you see or read about where to pat's point like the other languages and then they start talking about people that they don't know these people that have come into their room and talk about like uh, someone that's dead or, a, you know, like these weird things that you, these different stories you read about. It's, it's honestly, it's terrifying shit. Um, it's, yeah. it's, uh, I was going to go on one more point. There is uh, talked about, I talked about uh, going to the hospital or whatever, the uh, actual story of the actual exorcism uh, that the exorcist movie was based on is, is still probably the most horrifying uh exorcism story i've ever heard in my entire life like that kid had like fucking destroyed an entire hospital bedroom it, it, it was fucking nuts um and it was a boy it wasn't a girl um if you ever want a really creepy bit uh book to read that you guarantee will not sleep for a very long time pick up the book uh it's called possessed um possessed is the name of the book and it tells the real actual story of the exorcism and it is actually way fucking worse if that if you could believe it, it's way fucking worse it's terrible Go ahead, Kelly. Human mind is fucking crazy. Like the things that it can do, not just mentally, but physically. Because, like, I've heard of stories. This is a Prison City podcast, right? Out at the prison here, you know, during um, riots or breakouts or whatever. Like, people in maximum security with these giant steel doors, you know, kicking them in. And I'm like, did I hear that right? Kicking them in? It's like, oh, yeah. They kick them, just kick, kick, kick until the door, like, gives in and they get out. I mean, that's the power of a human being to be able to do that. It's like, if you put your mind to anything um good versus evil then I, I think you can accomplish anything and that's what i wanted to say on the spectrum of good versus evil we got we can't deny that there is um you know an entire spectrum in our world right here because some people would look at us at the even the prison city podcast and say oh that is so evil you know people that you know uh, older ladies we grew up with and think that we're the devil themselves because we say the f word and shit but you know that evil goes like so far skewed to the right or left or whatever way it goes that, that we can't even fucking wrap our minds around it same with goodness so that's the thing that i always think about when it comes to ghost possession uh the world is just good versus evil you can't deny that that doesn't exist because it clearly does right in front of your eyes no and uh, that, that point on the, the whole critique of those guys are evil or whatever you know um, well, people don't understand a lot of evil, most evil, it's not right in front of you. It's uh, there's a quote about being virtuous. You know, the people who start uh, who try to be the most virtuous or the least virtuous, the people who try to not be virtuous at all are the most virtuous. I'll have to pull that quote up. And that's, it's so fucking true. Like we've had people like uh, Mike Freeze, who's been on the show was talking about people like thinking that all the Cutler Brothers production stuff is like R rated or whatever. That's all we do. And number one, if you actually see our play schedule, at least probably 80% of it is not even PG-13, honestly. Number two, the same people that will say, like, we did Glenn Gary, Glenn Ashford, the F-words or whatever, same people will boycott a comedy night show that has, like, bad cursing in it or whatever we do, will go home and watch a terrible fucking R-rated movie of sex and violence and 500 efforts with no fucking problem. But they're being virtuous, so they can't be seen in public seeing it. While at the same time, your fucking neighborhood priest is a goddamn child molester, right, Mahomes? 
Um, not only, not only that, I mean, I, it wasn't the church I attend, but he was directly across from me as a neighbor. Yeah. So that was a pretty big surprise. <laughs> um, right. Hey, did he, did he come out of his house one day and be like, surprise? <laughs> no, it was definitely like, it was weird because he used to always come over and talk to my dad or, or he, he had like a sporting news, um, subscription. So he'd always like, he'd bring me over sporting news magazines you know, once every couple of weeks. And I was just like, I don't know. He was just a neighbor being nice, but I definitely think maybe he was looking for something else out of that. <laughs> now that <I'm> older. <laughs> hey, hey Mahoney, Deer Lodge is um, starting up a new karate class. How bad of an idea is that? <laughs> I can't think of a worse idea, honestly. <laughs> um, that's terrible. That is yeah, there's there's not a worse idea out there. Hey. There hasn't been a karate teacher in town that wasn't a child molester. Yes, I, uh, I mean that's when your bad. record is when your record is like 100 percent child molesters for karate. <laughs> I think maybe your town just isn't meant for karate. <laughs> and those 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 viewers that are watching from Nick or Wagwa tonight, this is a Deer Lodge, Montana, home of a Montana State Prison, thus the Prison City Podcast. Please move here sometime soon. And find out for yourself. Yeah. Hey, Mahoney. So the guy teaching karate is the dude that was kicking down steel doors at the prison. <laughs> well, in that case, I mean, one, he's done his time. He he did the did the crime, paid the time. And I can't think of anyone else I'd want, you know, my kids learning from. If you can kick a steel door down, that's <laughs> that's the kind of self-defense I want. Well, I gotta say more power to him. I, I hope that it is a good thing for the town stuff and I joke, but I just I said, you know, in, in our lifetime we were oh for two, so <laughs> not great. All right. Is this the part of the show where we're ready to go into my hell zone? <laughs> uh, hold on. I actually before like to kind of I guess somewhat get us back on the rails. I just want to kind of take a pulse of the room. Does does everyone on this podcast believe in possession? Or is there like Kelly, I'll start with you. You seem to be somewhat of the biggest naysayer or devil's advocate of it. I will, I'll come out and say, like, I'm, I fully believe in ghosts. I fully believe in aliens. And I fully believe in possession. That all the stuff you read about, all the things I've read about, all the different things, I've documentaries and stuff, I'm, yes, I believe in it. And I'm fucking scared of it. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, uh, I haven't delved super deep into this, so you know I don't know probably as much as any of you guys. I just, uh, again, I'm the fundamental guy, and I look at it from that point of or that purview, and I don't know. It's just there's something about it where I just I put it on that spectrum of good versus evil, and I, I don't know. Like our brains are so fucking weird, and we've seen people. We've been to like L.A. and stuff where some ladies just lost her mind running across the you know eight lanes of traffic, just screaming her balls out, and it's like where is she going? What's she going to do? And like, that could be counted as um, a demonic possession at some point in life, some point in time. I mean, but for us, we're just like, Oh yeah, she's fucking I may probably on drugs or something, you know? So I, I don't really know. I mean, it's weird. And you guys bring up the speaking other languages and saying shit that you could possibly know that stuff. I is, uh, I don't know how to explain that. I would have to look deeper into that, but I, I, I will leave it at this. I, I know that there is good and there's evil and there's very good and there's very evil. And that's kind of, if we have time, I wanted to talk about that with like some of the actual uh, demonic, satanic worship and shit that's going on in the world right now, um, especially with like the elitists and billionaires and stuff. And yes, this alludes to Pizzagate and shit like that. So if we have time, that's the part of it I would like to talk about. So I, I don't know, Mahoney, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> on the fence, man. He gets us, he gets us scared. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Uh, yeah, to go what, off what Mahoney's saying, I'm kind of in the same boat. It scares the shit out of me, I guess. Um, so when I was like in high school or college, I don't know, something before this, I just remember researching this and kind of diving down that rabbit hole to – find out you know the movie you know the movie and what's behind it and what was the actual story so i dove into this um article where this guy actually tried to track down the child that was involved in the exorcist and i can if i could find it again i'll post a link it's like seven different parts just interesting if you want to go down that route 
but it turns out it wasn't a little girl, it was a little boy. So he's trying to like track down where it actually happened and where it lived, where they lived and all this stuff and what he's doing now and whatever. And like I said, this is a long time ago since I've, uh, you know, kind of went down there, but he actually talks to the kid who's now an adult and asked him, and it was kind of like talking to Steve Bartman, you know, kind of like, I'm not going to give you any answers, very short um, sentences and pretty much not going to whatever go there and to, uh, you know, increase uh, my fame or whatever. But it was very interesting. I think, yeah, there's something that does kind of draw you to that. Uh, really quick, my favorite, one of my favorite movies is Paranormal Activity, and I remember driving to that by myself. I think I told this story, but I was by myself, and I was like, why in the hell am I going to see this by myself? I never do this, but I think it's just like something inside of you, you know, just kind of in a way takes over, and you, and what Kelly is saying, you might have that take over your entire life, where you believe it, and that's you know, that's it for you, I guess. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to say on it. And um, I've done, uh, unlike probably anybody on this uh, show so much, I mean, I've done like a shitload of uh, stuff and I've always looked into it. And I kind of go back to some of the witchcraft stuff I was looking at and history of that and books on that. Um, you took it to talk about uh, good versus evil and everything else. Um, society historically has misplaced what's good and what's evil. It, it's constantly. Uh, has misplaced it so so i believe in evil spirits without a doubt i believe people like satanic cults kelly's talking about i believe that miss it got mistargeted onto witchcraft and witches being very evil and all which is evil and stuff like that um where i think um satanic there are satanic type rituals and stuff done during medieval times or whatever but there's i've seen stuff on the satanic the church of satan today where it's like most of the church of Satan today it just believes in freedom of doing whatever the hell you feel like. It's not really demonic rituals or whatever. So I think sometimes evil gets mischaracterized um, a lot of times throughout our history. But I would say this, I believe in evil spirits. I don't know if I really believe in the devil himself to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know if I believe in a, a overall head Satan or whatnot. And I'll say this like this. Do you know uh, the devil in the Bible um, never really is confirmed to exist like it's they, they use the word lucifer and stuff and lucifer is kind of just like a fall night you do some research on this you'll you'll figure this out the devil when the bible is written there there's no actual head of the evil spirits there is no devil at all the devil didn't get invented to about the 16th century so and you can go up and look this stuff up it's all true and a lot of the reason the devil was invented in 16th century was because the pagans had this guy looked like not a modern day, one of the first devils, and they want to get people off pagan, the pagan religion so bad that they used one of the pagan uh, figures or whatever, and kind of turn that into the devil, make it evil so they get more people into Christianity than and get them away from uh, paganism. So with that said, I don't know if I really believe in the actual head of like hell or whatever. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but I do believe in 100% certainty with evil spirits and stuff. And I do also believe that um, possessions occur, but I think like there's also a lot of cases where there's no, there's no fucking possession. It's mental illness or something like that, which brings me to this final point here. I'm going to share my screen here. I came across this earlier today. This is really interesting. Um, this goes against uh, what I just said kind of, but uh, in Panama, this is uh, almost a year ago, almost two years ago. Uh, Panama, seven people were found dead after suspected exorcism. And this is where exorcism has gone wrong. You might put that in that category. Uh, the victims include a pregnant woman, five children, um, age one to 11, and the six was a neighbor. Other 15 people were freed. Um, so it, this happens, this is weird. They were performing a ritual inside this structure, and a ritual where, where people were being held against their will and mis being mistreated. And all of these rites were aimed at killing them if they didn't repent their sins. Um, if you were watching Dexter and the Doomsday Killer, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. So this is where these this crazy cult of people, and, and um, they weren't crazy at, at first. The, the religious sect is called the New Light of God. It had been operating in the uh, region for about three months. Um, last, the previous Saturday before this happened, one of the members claimed to have received a message from God that they were supposed to go out and kidnap these victims and then beat and kill them. Um, and, uh, that's, that's basically what they did. So this is why there should be a threshold of proof when it comes to like, do not possession. Cause otherwise you just have like 
shit like this going on like crazy all the time like uh, 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 they're evil so we need to, to cure them from this let's kidnap all these people and, and make them put guns to their head and torch them until they repent their sins so, that sounds yeah. like uh, Frailty the movie <clears throat> with uh, Paxton Bill Paxton yeah, yeah. great movie yeah yeah <laughs> that's that, an, that's and that movie. that shows you how broad the definition of exorcism is that's basically like hey, you need to go to confession and I'm going to make you do confession in front of all these people. And if you don't do it, we're going to kill you. That, I don't think that's exorcism. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to just say put exorcism in that title. That doesn't, that's not really an exorcism. Um, I believe in these, uh, I, I believe in it. I'm just thinking of this as you were talking about or sharing that Panama thing in the energy. That's all this world is, this energy, you know, and, and whatever you think about exists. So if you think evil thoughts, if you start entertaining the idea that, for whatever reason, I don't get pedophilia and shit, but if you're like entertaining the thought of, oh man, a 10 year old and start getting sexual about it and think about it nonstop for who knows, a month, a year, several years, eventually you're gonna be on that evil side of the spectrum because your thoughts are gonna become things, you know? So you really gotta watch what you think about. And it seems like easy for us. We grew up, you know, in great households in a great part of the world, but I don't know where those, yeah, these, some of these thoughts come from that turn into these tangible disgusting fucking things but apparently they're there and they are um what's that called they're on an energy what yeah they're uh, uh, vibrant they're, they're vibrating uh, on vibrant, a different yeah. energy that we couldn't understand yeah and a good example and i also believe um you believe what's ever in your world so if you grew up your entire life inside like george montana never leave at all I and mean, never go anywhere else then your mind is it's different now because the internet because you can see things so it's, i guess it's a little bit different just say there's no internet, there's no tv and all you know is dear watch montana your mind's gonna be uh way different than on um, people that have uh, traveled or whatever um the other po- example is and mom's been trying to give you uh your wife this book for fucking weeks now is uh the the Cle- the people that the ladies that were captured in cleveland they were kept inside this house in cleveland for years uh, yeah. years yeah, and they were scared to death. They didn't leave the house, not because the house, they, they had plenty of opportunities to leave, plenty. But they lived inside this house where they lived in a world that he created, where he created this environment where it's like, if you leave, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to find you and kill you, do all these things. So he created that world. None of that was true. It was in their head. But what's in your head creates your reality. So yeah, it's just like the horoscopes we were talking about last week or a couple of weeks ago. You know, you read, I'm an Aries, you read the Aries horoscope. Oh, yeah, that sounds like me. Well, no, I... I shape that in my head so that it sounds like me, you know, that could yeah. sound like fucking anybody. Um, it's just like the religious fanatics too. We know plenty of them where they do, they think they're God. They think they can interpret the Bible better than anybody else. That in a way is probably kind of evil or really evil. Maybe it's like, you're not God. You're just thinking these things and pretending like you're creating this world around you that doesn't exist for anybody else. Well, that I mean, that's the line. I mean, doesn't that total line between religion and, you know, what you believe about religion and what you, you know what I'm saying? Kind of what you believe here and what you believe there, kind of like scattered in a way when it comes to that subject. Well, and that's, you can get so many. Last last thing, I just think that whatever you think becomes a thing. And the more (laughs) you think about it, it becomes a fucking thing. You know, I don't think that I know that, Mahoney. Well, that's and so I was going to kind of to your point and a little bit off of Matt. If you use how many different religious people, cults, whatever you want to call them, in our lifetime have we seen predict the end of the world? Like, mm-hmm. give us an exact date and time, and it never. It, like, we're still kicking, as far as I know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the world did end in 2020, and this is all just some big fucking. <laughs> you know, I, I, but, yeah. I mean, there, there are certain laws in yours, but I, I agree. Your mind has so much fucking power. I mean, I'm, not, I'm saying this. I'm just saying this out loud. It's like I, I spent several years in Alaska. I'd be sipping vodka by myself at night, just not really happy with the way things were going over. And I just honestly sat there and wished for chaos night after night after night. I honestly, I didn't just do it. I didn't do it. Man. I was like, oh, it'd be cool if we had a bunch of chaos because I'm bored off my ass. I did it with actual real feeling and emotion because I'm drunk and I'm just listening to music like, I wished it all back because I chaos, I thrive in chaos. I'm just that type of person. What happens? A year and a half later, fucking COVID hits out of nowhere. Everything's chaos. So it's like your mind can create that. There's also reality where COVID-19 doesn't hit and everything's fine. I definitely believe in parallel realities and your mind can control so fucking much. I don't think people ever realize how powerful their mind is because they always are looking for instantaneous results for everything. 
but your power, your mind can fuck up a lot. I mean, your mind can fuck up. Your mind can produce, your mind produces everything in reality. That's just reality. Well, it's like Zodiac reading your Zodiac or getting a fortune cookie. It's however you interpret that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we can, yeah. And it, what a, I can't remember. Someone made a North Korea joke earlier, but like, that's a great example of how you can control like what your environment and where you are and your surroundings controls what, like what's going on. And a lot of the time it's just, these people are born into this world. They have no idea what's outside of North Korea and what is given to them is like super <laughs> structured, right? Like their news and stuff over there is crazy. And they, there's a chance that those people will never know anything but that, which is yeah, crazy absolutely. to me. I was just listening to Alan Watts before this. He's my new favorite uh, philosophical guru. So check him out if you can, Alan Watts. But he was just talking about that. It's weird. It's like everything else in, in um, reality. There, it's a double-edged sword where it's like, yeah, you can make decisions, which means you think you have control. Like I can move to this city or I can date this person. I have control of my life. Uh, but you also have no control whatsoever. You make a decision and you move that way it's going to unfold the way it's going to unfold no matter what. The only thing you can do is make that initial decision and then make another decision, make another decision. But you really have no fucking control. So you might as well never lose uh, sleep. That's what he said. You might as well never lose sleep at night. There's no point in that because that just means you're fighting with um, the universe. Like the universe is a being just like us four here. It's like you're trying. I can't control what Mahoney does. I can't control what Pat does or Rat does. You can't control what the fucking universe does. So sleep well at night and just know that, you know, you make good decisions today and you're, you're going down the lazy river, you know, drinking a margarita or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's, how, that's why your goals are so effective. Whatever you put in your head, it eventually comes true at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyways, let's get on to uh, what we're going to talk about here is um, the first exorcism I want to go over. And I got two of them tonight. This is, uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, one quick thing before we jump into it. There was a show, it might be on Hulu now. Um, it was on CBS. Wrong. And said it's, that a, <laughs> it's a show called Evil. Um, that's all it is, it's titled Evil. And it's about um, a lot of this. Like it's about religion, uh, somebody who doesn't believe in religion, seeing like the sleep paralysis demons, possession, like it goes through a bunch of different stuff. And I've like, I'm not one to get like super into like, tv like sitcom drama type of things like that that are on syndicated tv uh it's super interesting though i think i mean this might not be maybe just for our listeners but i think everyone on this current panel would find it interesting evil is the name of it um i'll look it up and while pat starts just i'll tell you what right. you can find cool all right so um this is also called the exorcism of emma schmidt but her name's anna Eklund. And the demonic possession exorcism occurred over several decades, culminating in extensive exorcism that lasted from October, oh, sorry, August 18th to December 23rd, 1928 in Erling, Iowa. And um, she was 14 when this happened. She had uh, exhibited skin act into possession at the beginning of 14. Um, and then she was 46 year old, 46 years old by the time her final exorcism took place. But basically she had... Um, two pretty bad ones and she was cured initially and then she came back uh the one thing i want to say that wasn't in my other document she repeatedly began exhibiting signs of possession during her adolescence demonstrating revulsion of holy objects disturbed thoughts and inability to inability to enter churches she also began to take part in un, un, unspeakable sexual acts i tried to clarify what that meant exactly but um they never did clarify that one um and we're gonna go on to the the full story here is where it's the best story of it so this um they made a film about it, it looks like it's a beat film but uh basically she had uh she was she was born in wisconsin blah 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 age of 14 um again she was unable to go into a church without violent thoughts entering her mind ideas of smashing water fonts Harming priests, desecrating consecrated items, as well as being unable to receive Holy Communion were all warning signs that something was not right. It got so bad that she began to feel unable to enter the church, being held back by an interior hidden power. Um, so they got involved, this guy, this 
Theo Theophilus uh, Reisinger, I believe that's all. And uh, he was born in Germany. He's a exorcist, and he he's kind of did a really good job. He's one of the more popular exorcists out there. Um, after the first exorcism, she experienced a short amount of peace. It uh, didn't last long. Basically, she became convinced that her problems came from the torment that she experienced from her abusive father and her aunt, Mina. Uh, it was reported at the time of her first exorcism that Mina was a witch who had put cursed herbs in Anna's food and placed curses on her. Despite both her father and Mina dying, she felt the spirits continued to usher demonic presence in her body. So I thought it was weird in this one where her own aunt basically sent demons after her which is really kind of fucked up because the first one she was fine and then the second one it seems like she basically got possessed because um her aunt did a evil spell on him and the second one um he comes in to try to remove the demons um is is really the intense one um this is a catholic church uh when the priest first arrived here from germany or whatever his car stalled out and he said that was that was pretty normal you don't expect things to go smoothly when you're going to an exorcism uh, well, here are the sessions. Uh, so she was tied to an iron bed, held down by the strongest nuns in the covenant as she began doing the rites. Her eyes fell shut and she appeared as if sedated. But suddenly she was able to dislodge herself from the bed, threw herself high up against the wall. I don't know if it's a real picture or not, uh, but there, there's, uh, she is crawling up the wall right <sighs> there. And she began to scream. And when commanded by the priest to stop, she responded in various languages. Again, language thing. She spoke in English. German and Latin, claiming to be multiple entities, including Beelzebub, Judas, as well as Anna's father, Aunt Mina. Judas um, is one that occurs in all these. It seems like Judas is just. I feel bad for Judas. He got he got screwed over in that whole crucifixion thing. <laughs> now, he, now he's just he's possessing every, He's possessing. He's making his hands on now. Uh, Judas also possessed uh, Emily Rose, if if that was a real uh, thing or not. But the thing that she spoke in different languages kind of. It gives away then exorcism last till December 23rd over three different sessions. Um, horrific symptoms of vomiting, bile, and tobacco infused liquid. Her body distorted through expansion and contraction. She screamed at the people present, telling them information she could not know in various voices. This is where this one's super fucking interesting. Um, uh, that, that's kind of the second one he finally uh, cured her or whatever, but it was just interesting. What stuck out to me is that she was able to speak in different voices, she was able to tell things that she couldn't possibly freaking know. And the idea that a witch and uh, this abuse and they they had it, her own like relatives cast these spirits on her. It's just freaking crazy. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I mean, those are the ones I talk about. Anytime it's different languages um, and that, you know, they didn't sp specify there because maybe back in those times, it was a little more prevalent that maybe she had a German relative in her family and she grew up around German. So you might have that. Or maybe back then in the church, the mass was still said in Latin. So it's the stuff like that where they've never even been exposed to the language. And then the stuff you read, if you read on these, they, they talk about like a priest they've never seen in their entire life. They come in and they start talking about things that happened to them when they were the priest when they were kids or family relatives that they have that are, are dead. You know, like stuff, there is no way in hell they would ever know. Like, no way. No, that, that's where it's really bizarre. And that's where the, the exorcism of Emily Rose, I never found any of that stuff. The, the most brutal thing about the exorcism of Emily Rose is she was able to tear out her own tendons and break her own knees, which is freaking insanity. At that point, I probably would have took her to the hospital, but they just continued. Uh, but uh, Anna, Emily Rose, you should look up. It's not worth it because I, 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 she didn't do the Latin stuff or any of the other things, but um, it's interesting. But what do you think about this uh, Eklund girl, Kelly? Well, once again, I'm just going to play devil's advocate on the panel because that's apparently my role tonight. But, uh, you know, I, I try to explain things in my head like, OK, this either means either this is one like this shit actually happened and like there is demons and the devil and possession, and all that shit. Or one explanation could be, you know, the Catholic Church is riddled with controversy and manipulation. You know, maybe this is all staged for whatever reason they were trying to get from it you know i mean we are storytellers we are actors and writers and everything we tell stories what if one day you know in a hundred years from now people look at red gate or something or or enigma and say holy shit this is what happened there you know so i i'm always trying to explain away like how does this make sense like what what is another explanation for this so that 100 percent could be the conspiratorial side of things like this is uh, doctored up this is staged 
for reasons for the church, for the government, who fucking knows and who cares, but it could easily be staged, easily could be staged. And um, the second part of that, uh, I've completely forgot. So we'll have to come back to that. How do you you explain her speaking other languages? Um, Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like th- that couldn't be staged. They couldn't just say like that happened. I mean, Matt said something about recordings. If that's what you're referring to, I, I guess like why? How could you possibly like learn Latin? Stage all these things. I mean, these are the, uh, the exorcism. Did, she, did exorcism. she even speak Latin? Though is my point. Like, or did they just say she was speaking Latin? She no, ran she, out the wall. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they said they have witnesses that said. She, I don't know if there's. I don't know if there's any audio on this one that's happened so long ago or not. But yeah, they said she spoke Latin and she knew things about this priests and everything um so so we my point is um on all that shit it's fucked up like it's really fucked up we could sit down and write a story right now and put it out there and pretend like it happens uh for our own benefit or whatever and we could say oh matt yeah foam came out his mouth and he was speaking fucking belgianese or whatever you know we could say all that for our own benefit that's the point of story number one the other one that i want to discuss is the reincarnation side of things which is fascinating to me. I don't think this is the first time we've ever been here on earth. And I don't think it's going to be the last time we've ever been here, not on earth, but in the universe, I think we're going to keep coming back forever and ever and ever. Um, because when you're a kid, we all have these memories of like, I was two years old and I was having these vivid dreams or I remember vaguely like this fucked up thing happening. How do we have those thoughts if we just came into the world pure and new and a blank slate, you know? So I'm just wondering if like this brain power is so strong maybe some of this shit, like speaking latin and all that is pulled from an alternate reality or a different life like you know she's 14 years old and she's freaking out and then all of a sudden oh yeah i was fucking molested by all these uh, priests or whatever in spain a uh, hundred years ago you know and just that power that energy still there then blah, 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 you know and she speaks latin <laughs> that way now, that's a more, but yeah that's a more <laughs> fucked up way of thinking about it but reincarnation is fascinating uh and it's a i think it's worth a discussion at some point uh i i think uh the parallel reality shift is 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 really interesting uh that there's that there's multiple realities maybe you can transfer uh transfer between uh different realities and that's one of the books i've been reading for a while uh, this past month or so it's really interesting stuff and i want to do i want to do a whole episode actually on parallel reality and stuff and quantum physics there's a lot i could talk about on that that's probably going to happen sometime in November, guys, because we have a banger of an episode next week. I'll tell you what. But I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you what, Pat, those two um, things that I said about those two um, understandings of that exorcism, I think would be ahead of she's possessed by demons that live in hell within the earth. I think that's not even on my radar for being a potentiality. And yeah. I think the thing that's that's interesting now, and I can I can get where you're coming from, like maybe they're whatever for whatever reason maybe they were trying to drum up popularity uh, for the catholic church in that particular region and this was the right and back then there's no recordings but it's the stuff now that there is recordings and there's multiple recordings and there's like even video out there that you know like that stuff albeit is not unfakeable it also is and who knows you know like what was that freaking uh I'm blanking on it. The the movie that everyone thought was real, what was fake, well, where they go out project. into the woods. Yeah. So there's there's that aspect to it. I, don't, I mean, it's just, and who knows, man? But I feel the fact that it's not just like the Catholic religion is most famous for it, but every like Christian religion has some form of exorcism. I find that interesting that it's been happening since Christianity has been around. I think that. And I don't know, maybe that like maybe that is storytelling and it's just been passed on for generation after generation. I just I don't know, man. I think it's it's pretty interesting. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it doesn't seem like most of these stories, you know, the original exorcist and this one or whatever, it seems like uh when it boils down to it they will go through a bunch of religions and finally like it's the catholics that they rely on because someone brought it up earlier maybe they have the most experience with exorcists or like history of this stuff but always seems like the catholics are the one in the end that you know are the ones that are sought after for this type of thing you know hey i think you're rubbing on your mic a little bit cuts or somebody is uh that's yeah that's probably Matt. 
is your mic on? Oh. Yeah, that's I don't know why that's part of your mic for some reason. Um, oh, anyways, headphones. oh, yeah, headphones, yeah. fucking headphones, stupid fucking headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, maybe those things are possessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like uh, trying to explain things again. I'm not a you know, scientist or atheist or whatever, where everything has to make 100% sense. I really don't think it has to because I don't think we know a fucking thing on this earth. I really think we're so stupid. Um, and we're just kind of, they say this is just a temporary glimpse of whatever. And it's true, you know, it's like, we're all going to be dead in a matter of years. And, and then what's next? We don't really fucking know. So well, I just I, like, to, I think it's fun to explain that away a little bit. I know those exorcisms too by whoever was performing it, you know, the priest didn't always, or didn't go in there by himself and just do the, you know, whatever. They always had someone documenting everything in detail. And that's, that's kind of like the creepy thing because they did have someone there, even though you don't have video or tapes of it, there's like journals of all this shit that who knows where it might be locked away, but there it's definitely documented most of it. I'll say, I'll say this, and this is why people might consider me a conspiracy theorist or whatever, or whatever, but I believe that if something can be manipulated in the world, it will be manipulated or it has been manipulated or it is currently being manipulated. It's been proven throughout entire the history of humankind. So that's why I have just a tough time believing almost fucking anything because it's like everything can be doctored, everything can be manipulated, and you can manipulate a whole whole um groups of people millions of people you know we don't need to get into the holocaust and stalin and all that shit but if it can be manipulated it will be manipulated no not everything is absolutely not there's a lot of stuff that's not but i'm just saying at some point an exorcism was manipulated for some reason yeah definitely so let's get on to our the big one of the night and this is the exorcism that the actual exorcist uh, movie is based on here i'm going to share my screen again here and um we'll see what wikipedia has to say about this this is interesting so the actual person that uh this happened to um his name was roland dull or his real name was robbie manheim he was a 14 year old boy was a victim of demonic possession in 1935. The events were recorded by attending priest Raymond J. Bishop. And the supernatural claims, the events were used in elements in The Exorcist. So <clears throat> let's go back to the origin of the claims here. <clears throat> in mid-1949, several newspaper articles printed anonymous reports of alleged possession exorcism. The source of these reports is the family's former pastor, Luther Miles, a uh, total of, according to one account, a total of 48 people witnessed this exorcism, nine of them Jesuits. This might be the most witnessed exorcism in history at the time, obviously, but uh, I'm not sure ever, but uh, that's it. really interesting. Um, uh, speaking in 2013, um, the author, uh, Thomas B. Allen, emphasized that definitive proof the boy known as only Robbie was possessed by malevolent spirits is unattainable. According to Alan, Halloran also expressed skepticism about potential paranormal events before his death. When asked Navy to make up a statement verifying the boy had actually been demonically possessed, he responded, no, I can't go on record. I never made an absolute statement about things. I didn't feel I was qualified. So there's your skepticism right there, and he didn't really feel as qualified. But um, here's what happened, because uh, I remember this from the book I read. Um, his aunt, um, Let's see, he, let's see his, his aunt was, uh, there's uh, Aunt Harriet, there she is. Aunt Harriet, uh, she was a spiritualist, and she introduced uh, Roland to the Ouija board when he expressed interest in it. And this isn't here, this is just what I remember from reading the book. Uh, basically, what happened was his aunt showed him all kinds of shit when it comes to spiritualism. So if he was, doesn't know what the spiritualist is, it's not the same as being spiritual, like you're a priest or a Christian or something like that. It's like you try to contact spirits and stuff. That's what spiritualist does. And that's kind of what she did. Um, showed them all these different things, played through the board, all this different stuff. Um, and she actually taught him one thing that was, I thought was really interesting in the book. You make a note, they've actually heard of this technique before. It's called a wallowing. And this is really creepy. Don't, I don't, don't try this at home if you get scared at all. Basically what you do is like, see this wall behind me? You tap on this wall, um, you ask a question, and you tap on it like three times. They say, if the answer is yes, 
tap back once? Or the answer is no, tap back three times. You just, you just keep, it's like a Ouija board on your wall. You just keep answering questions until you can get something to tap back or whatever. Really fucking creepy. So uh, after she died, he basically continued doing these things like the Ouija board and um, all these different things. Uh, basically, uh, after Harry's death, the family experienced just strange noises, furniture moving, ordinary objects like vases just flying off, levitating on the boys nearby. Um, they turned to a Lutheran pastor and, um, with parapsychology. Um, eventually claimed uh, that pastor eventually claimed household objects and furniture seen moving by themselves. Uh, it, it's uh, really interesting stuff. Um, he went on under, under a number of exorcisms. Uh, uh, again, just like the movie, he had a couple of different exorcists. A uh, Roman Catholic church named Ed, uh, priest Edward Hughes conducted an exorcism on Rowan at Georgetown University at a Jesuit, a Jesuit uh, hospital. During the exorcism, the boy allegedly slipped one of his hands out of the restraints, broke a bed string from the mattress, and used it as an impromptu weapon, slashing the priest's arm and resulting in the exorcism being halted. These are all real accounts. This actually fucking happened. The family traveled to St. Louis, where Roland's cousin contacted one of his professors at St. Louis University, and Bishop returned, spoke to William S. Bowdern, an associate of college. Uh, together, both priests visited Roland in his relative's home, where they allegedly observed a shaking bed, flying objects, and the boy speaking guttural voice and exhibiting an aversion to anything sacred. Bowden was granted permission from the archbishop to perform another exorcism. Go back to Georgetown University Hospital. A lot more bizarre shit happened there. That's just part of it. But he actually did grab a fucking weapon and almost kill a fucking priest. Um, before the next uh, exorcism ritual began, another priest came in, Halloran, who's the psych, uh, called a psychiatric uh, wing of the hospital, to help. Um, third Jesuit priest was there to assist. Halloran stated during this scene, words such as evil and hell, along with other various marks appeared on the teenager's boy body this is where it appears on um their uh skin or whatever words appear in the skin there's actually a, a disease out there where um they say words can appear on your skin which is talking about question i think that almost sounds like a made-up fucking disease if words just kind of randomly appear on your skin <laughs> i have to look into that but uh, <laughs> uh, uh allegedly during the litany of the saints portion of the exercise ritual the bureau boys match began to shake Moreover, Roland broke Halloran's nose during the process. Halloran told a reporter that after the rite was over, the anonymous subject of the exorcism went on to lead a rather ordinary life. So that's just, that's just, that's a brief, that's like a snapshot of the shit that happened. There are several priests that quit. The, the priest that got slashed or whatever, he fucking quit right after that. I mean, there, read the book Possessed. Again, you'll never sleep again in your life, but it would blow your fucking mind the shit that happened blow your fucking mind <laughs> never sleep again the rest of your life <laughs> Tell you what, you read this book and without the sleep you won't get you'll be dead in seven days it's like watching the ring <laughs> oh fuck we just watched that the other night that's such a good movie yeah. for the record after i read that book i gave it away to somebody a couple months later and i said just keep it. i never want to see the book again <laughs> Man, that's kind of like uh, in high school, I read a book, Hell, like about a guy going to hell that my oh, yeah. mom gave me. Remember mom would give us just all those fucked up Christmas gifts? <laughs> <laughs> that was a Christmas gift? No, no I thought it was Easter. I almost said that was Easter, actually. Oh, yeah, it might have been Easter. At yeah, Grandma Kay's house. We, we passed, I think we all passed that book around. We all read it that day. <laughs> yeah, and then we passed around out Aunt Allison. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no i read that book hell man and that gave me the heebie fucking jeebies for a long time and and finally i got that out of my head but it was it wasn't called it was seven minutes in hell i want to say seven minutes in hell yeah it was such a vivid like uh accounts though it was like man is this guy making this up because this is really like good storytelling here um i was gonna say during that when you're reading all that last exorcism stuff you know thinking about um oh fuck now i'm thinking about the book hell <laughs> i lost it <laughs> <laughs> um oh oh like like you know some little girl gets um exercised is that the appropriate way to say that exercise the demons yep exercise the demons she's you know um walks into like pat said walks into the church and freaks out it's just a terrible place again talking about parallel universe or uh, reincarnation, you know, she came from somewhere else, let's say, and was terribly molested by priests or 
people, you know, crusaders in a village during that era of time or whatever, you know. So with that parallel, what, why are we afraid of the things that we're afraid of right now? Like all four of us have things that we're afraid of. Did it happen in this lifetime or did it happen in the last lifetime or a hundred years ago? Like, why am I afraid of heights? Deathly afraid of heights. I can't remember one thing in this life that made me go, that's why I'm afraid of heights. You know, isn't that kind of weird that we have these fears out of just nowhere, like no justification. I've always, I have a, a very like, it's this deep, like guttural triggered fear of a big body of water at nighttime. And I have no reason to be afraid of it. I've never like fallen off a boat in the middle of the night. If it's like, and rivers don't scare me shit. We go to a river every summer and I, we're down there at night all the time. But if it's like, if it's a lake or a sea or an ocean at nighttime scares the shit out of me. And I don't have a good reason why. It's, it's kind of weird. I, you can't see. I don't know. I, I don't really like jumping in the water during the daytime if I was in like the middle of a lake or something. But uh, I guess if I'm going like three or four deep or six feet years, it's not that big of a deal. But like just jumping into like water that's like 12 feet deep or deeper, then it's kind of like it kind of gives you that fucking weird vibe. I'm like, okay, if you can't see. Something's going to grab you. Yeah. 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 Like Jason. <laughs> yeah. Jason's going to grab you. I'm definitely afraid of that too, like <laughs> swimming in really deep water where you can't see the bottom, yeah. which is weird because like, you know, we used to swim uh, when we first went to Uncle Bill's Lake, we used to swim way the fuck out there, but it's just like the uh, the unknown, like what is down there? Is some giant fish? I'm always afraid a fish is going to come <laughs> bite my fucking toe off. Like that's a, just an irrational fear. Bite oh, your yeah. dank off when you're swimming maybe, naked. Maybe that too. That's why I said toe. <laughs> you, go, you, go, you go back to uh, Mahone's childhood, and it's like that Jason takes Manhattan, his, his dad's in the boat. He throws Mahone's out when he's five years old. Now swim, swim before Jason gets you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, like, why do we have these irrational fears? And maybe that can explain away, again, some of the exorcism stuff, like the, the fear of walking into a church or something. Is that from something not even in this life but several lives ago is that from something back then that you don't even know why but it's there in your head in your spirit in your vibration yeah i don't know Uh, i don't know yeah then you just get like this ultra no i'm not gonna fucking do this when they're kind of basically kind of trying to force you to do this religious type thing you know what i'm saying you're kind of rebelling without subconsciously knowing why i guess yeah yeah absolutely uh it's just it's just weird i I feel like all of i had these thoughts today about synchronicity you know synchronicity however you pronounce it yeah yeah and like how everything in us us men and women and the universe like it's all the same if something goes up it has to come down if something goes left it has to go right and I've been playing with this in the stock market, believe it or not, where I'm like, this has to like make this right. This has to make this pattern right. Yeah, it might take a month or six months or a year, but this has to make it right because that's just the world we're in. Everything boomerangs back. Negativity, positivity, evil, good. Everything boomerangs back. And it's interesting as fuck to think about that. Start looking at it. You'll recognize it in your own life. So yeah. is, is that your way of telling us that you are down like in a crazy amount in the stock market right now? <laughs> You're just waiting for it to bounce back. <laughs> I'm just crying and sweating. Everything boomerang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not boomerang. I think you're right. Uh, it's we'll like the one meme. There. It's like the one meme when things have been going too well for three days in a row. Huh. <laughs> you know, you're just kind of yeah. waiting for something to go wrong here. Yeah. And a little word of uh, advice to everyone listening. It's um, assu- it's like improv. Assume everything is working for your benefit. Assume every move you make is right. Could, because shit's going to happen no matter what. Your life is not going to be perfect. Shitty fucking things are going to happen. Assume that's in your benefit and you'll be, you'll be fine. You know, you'll be happy. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Yeah, I mean, this has been a pretty freaking interesting conversation when it comes to uh, exorcisms and, and, and demons and evil spirits and, and things of that nature. Um, kind of go on and on and on. Have you guys ever heard of walling before? Tapping on walls? and No, and I, like, it honestly kind of gave me, like, the chills just thinking back to 
that experience, the Ouija board thing that I had, like, I don't want to fuck with that at all. That's that. No, uh, no thanks. Yeah. I've, I've had out of everything I've done, I'll try almost fucking anything to tell you the truth. Um, I won't try a Ouija board though. I I've, I've heard too many fucking stories about Ouija boards. I've heard way too much shit. There's no possible way I'll ever mess around with the Ouija board. Cause I just don't believe in fucking trying to interact with that spirit world. It's just, yeah, I just, I, I just uh, think you're asking for trouble, like with actual spirits. Witchcraft doesn't necessarily involve spirits. I'm okay with that, but no. <laughs> but uh, I would, spirits, I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. Yeah, I would, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, because that's like I said, that stuff still sticks with me just vividly, and that's it's decades ago now. Yeah, no, that's that shit's fucking creepy as hell. Oh, so, yeah. so Mark, do you do you still get uh, like? Sometimes if you think about it deeply, afraid to fall asleep and shit. Like I told you that that night when we did it, um, I was like, boy, I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> um, and it was it was like somewhat in jest. But then I told you that thing happened with my fucking uh, trimmer. And I didn't I didn't sleep a wink after that. I was in my head. I was trying to justify like this is normal. Like this is fine. This is just some weird quirk. And then it kept happening and happening. So I, I got shit sleep that night. <laughs> um, I got junk sleep. And thanks again to our sponsor, 1-800-MATTRESS. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I really have done, uh, I, I feel like it's somewhat of an expert job of, of blocking that and just trying to focus on like, I just, there's so many positive, there's so much good going on that that, when I do think about it, it takes a long time to to just not think about it again <laughs> well yeah. I, I got a kind of a, i know we're on demonic possession but i got kind of a weird fucking ghost story about someone else i was just thinking about this uh, you know all these sayings we have in life like you go looking for trouble you're gonna find it this goes back to all the mind stuff like whatever you want to be there is gonna be there if you think your house is haunted it's gonna be haunted you know if you think anything is gonna be there so anyways um uh, I don't want to give away the identity, but I was at Lucky Lil's like a year ago, and this lady that used to work there, she comes in, and she was a nice, normal lady, you know, and she comes in, she's just like, uh, what's going on? She just, she's like barefoot on one foot and a shoe on the other, just like she's homeless or some shit. It's like, hey, how you doing? I just thought she was drunk. I didn't know what was going on. And then I had heard just a couple things to the grapevine, like that her house was haunted or something, or she said it was. And then she proceeds to go off about how haunted her house is and the walls and there's fingernails scratching down the walls. And, and, and this is ladies not on drugs, at least as far as I know, I don't really see her doing drugs. That's why it's so fucked up. She's like, Kelly, I have to sleep in my car outside. I just can't do it anymore. It went on and on and on. And this lady literally lost her fucking mind. It seemed like she lost her job there she lost her career she's now a lesbian which nothing against lesbians i'm just saying she wasn't before this <laughs> and uh it's just fucked up and it's like she's so into her head showing these pictures to everyone showing these uh sharing these stories and i think she's fucking herself up big time because she believes this shit happened which i don't think it did i think she just is making it i really think she's just making it up in her head and you said no, like no history of drugs or any sort of substance no, abuse or anything? Normal lady, nice lady. And I just saw her and I was like, you know, I was just down there like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, what the fuck? And I looked down, she's not wearing a shoe. It's like, man, you're really fucking yourself up. Like she looked possessed, but I think it's her own doing. Dude, like, do you think, you know how sometimes, and we kind of talked about this, like sometimes, especially with these like exorcism, exorcism movies, like you watch it and you kind of let yourself like, get a little too involved or sometimes you like mm -hmm. with me i like watch a comedy movie and i'm like i find myself like that later that day kind of like mimicking the main character's actions or like kind of <laughs> in you know like subconsciously not knowing it and then i catch myself I'm like jesus man live your own life um <laughs> you think <laughs> you think she had something like that maybe yes 100 percent. and you you guys remember you know prison city podcast the old prison yeah. we talked about ghost stories last week well, you remember like certain individuals down there, not in our troop, but the, like worked it down there and they were just obsessed with like the ghost stories. And I, I have a burn on my arm and I have yep. scratches on my back. And, and I always looked at them like, you are fine. You got to get out of here. Like that place does something to people. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stories down there. There's and a lot of us on stories. That could be the bad juju. Um, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need to apparently move my operation, so I'm gonna go on mute for a well, second. Well, again, talking about vibration, you know, that's an old prison, so the vibration down there is already gonna be whatever the evilness is. You know, if that's a higher or lower vibration, I don't know, but it's it's on that vibration of negative evilness, and it affects you really, you know, um, and. I remember doing like our creep shows down there and it was just such a different feel than doing it at our theater where we got the heat going and you're indoors and shit. And uh, it's like the only fight I ever got in with Zane Cosby. We're down there and we did a couple tours and then we were just like yelling at each other. I was like, Zane. And then he yelled at my mom and I was just like, Zane, that's fucking bullshit, man. You shouldn't fucking do that. And the only time we ever got in a fight was in the Gunport theater during a creep show surrounded by all this scary negative energy, you know? That is, yeah, that's that's freaking weird. Because Zane's usually a pretty like calm, relaxed dude and everything. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So, anyways, that was my two bits on that ghost story. <laughs> I don't know. I think this demonic possession shit has kind of sucked the energy out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> gone for uh, almost an hour and a half so that's pretty good yeah shit uh yeah but um here i'm gonna show you this video that mike free sent me it's a luciferian new year's eve propaganda where he shows how the seattle space needles um they did a virtual new year's eve thing and it apparently it had uh, uh satanic rituals embedded in it you want to see it <laughs> yes yeah, let's see it. I uh, only pulled up he, he, uh, Seattle, Seattle New Year's. Yeah, and and I know we're starting to run short on time tonight, but Pat, one of these days we should talk about the um, elitist satanic pedophile group that's running the world right now. <laughs> yeah, because that's interesting as fuck, and I I have actually looked at that a lot, and. Uh, People say, nah, that can't happen. It's like, well, why is it out there? Like, are people just making up this like fucked up shitty stuff just to be shitty? Like, let's, oh, I... let's, if we can't even talk about it, then it makes me suspicious as no. fuck. So here it is. Um, here, I'll turn on some audio. I'll, I'll turn on the audio here. You guys can hear it. I just suck it. What was this for? This is for New Year's Eve. They lit it off right as the thing was going. Is this a hologram or what? How are they doing this? I don't even fucking know. It's a hologram. Can we turn the audio down? It's like a hologram. And look at this weird shit. You got snakes coming out of it. I'm going to put my mic back. So, is there specific spots that. Mike says is like satanic, satanic or whatever. I'm not sure. I don't really. I think it looks kind of weird. I, I got to watch the video he sent me. He was asking me about it today. Um, so did, did the mom just leave the podcast? Because I'm kind of ready to circle the wagons here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a virtual thing. I got to do some more research on it. They set this up for New Year's this is at the Space Needle in Seattle. If, if you guys have video watching this. And there's a virtual New Year's Eve thing and these different lights and things. Um, they did this virtual thing because of COVID, but it uses um, like a real video from, oh, look at this, like a space invasion going on here. Looks like a, a real video of the space, you know, but they mix in a hologram digital effects to it. Um, this is, uh, and this, this is all digital, obviously. It just, it just the way they did it is really freaking cool. But basically, um, we're looking at Mahomes is back. We're looking at satanic images used on the virtual Space Needle New Year's program. <laughs> um, so, so, Pat, uh, briefly, what was the whole thing about? Like, they're gonna start showing us. I mean, they've already started, but U UFO stuff in the skies to distract us. Is that what's going yeah, on? That's gonna be next week's. There's Mahomes after just shit his pants at the Falcons lost. There it goes up in the air. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> it, this is what he wanted to lead on. And I, I didn't, 
it's kind of a weird virtual thing. I just kind of actually creepy to tell you the truth. Who put that together? But I'm not gonna show the whole thing. Uh, it was uh, the Space Needle team did that a hologram digital thing on. Uh, oh, some entrepreneur put that together. It's kind of a creepy, weird thing. Did you watch that at all, Mahomes? Have you seen that video before? No, no. I mean, I don't. You know, I'm familiar with the play, the town of Seattle, but I don't know a whole lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh i think we're gonna circle the wagons here before you find even satanic images in that video <laughs> circle that's good yeah demons. <laughs> i'd rather not uh go to bed possessed tonight if i yeah. could avoid it all right so with that said I'll, I'll kick it to matt what's your final word on tonight's show about yeah. demons and everything um so to round up the demons <laughs> just round up the demons. Yeah, yeah, just round, round up, up those the demons. demons. <laughs> um God, I don't know, man. Creepy shit. A lot of creepy shit. Like I said, I believe uh I should stay away from it for the most part. Uh the as far as the exorcism goes, man, you really want to dive down that rabbit hole, which I think I might, not tonight, because it's too scary. But um good shit, gentlemen. Good shit. So, yeah, uh, Kelly, what do you think about all this tonight? Your final words here? Um, I think I kind of gave all my points on the, what I think of the demon stuff, but I just want to say watch what you think out there because your thoughts do have uh, meaning and they are – it creates tangible stuff. So you can either use that uh, against yourself, against society, or you can use it for yourself and for society. And once you learn that, it's a lot of fun to go – like we're doing the Doss Fruit Comedy Tour right now. It's a lot of fun to go, okay, I'll, it's not stressful anymore. It's like, I got to make a call or I got to send an email. And then you just watch it unfold in front of your eyes. And it's like, okay, this person's talking to me now. How does this assist to my goal? Like, it's all set up for you. You just have to play along. Like, don't fucking try to control it. And don't get pissed off. Someone calls you, answer your fucking phone because they're probably there to help you, you know? Unless um, you haven't paid your rent, it's your landlord, then probably avoid them. But your thoughts are things, and watch what you think, people. And Mahomes, what are your final words on the, tonight's show? Possession is one of the things, like, outside of a big body of water that scares the shit out of me, honestly. And maybe maybe I'm more apt to, to lean into these things and believe them because of that experience that I had in the, that I spoke about in the last episode that I'm not going to say it like shaped my entire life, but in terms of like my belief system in paranormal and maybe unexplainable is much higher because of that experience. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It is the thing. It's one of the things that like creeps me out the most though to, to, to mass thing. I always kind of find myself around this time of year looking back into it, or maybe I watched the exorcism of Emily Rose or there's, there's some, and then we are like this group is kind of interested in b horror films and so there's actually some not terrible b rate horror films on exorcism so it's for whatever reason i find it fascinating um but i will say i will totally agree with what kelly said is the the power of positive thinking and what you think even when i talk you know, like when we asked about like do, did i get scared when i was a little kid after that thing happened i did and i talked about the power of positive thought like I had a brother that I shared a room with, or I, you know, I wasn't as nearly as afraid when my dad was around because my positive thought was like, no matter what I have, there's something that's going to be, I'll be okay. You know, no matter how scary this may be, the positive thought was like, there'll be someone to like help protect me. So I think there's that there's times when, as we get older and the weight of living or whatever the hell we're all going through, I find myself trying to like consciously think like, each morning, I don't know if you want to call it meditation or whatever you want to call it, but I try and come up with like, un, um, you know, it's typically 10. Like, what are 10 good things in my life today? So I don't have to fucking get caught up in this negative, like, hate spiral that we can kind of get, like, notice, you know, we talked about this before, like, all the shitty news that's constantly on TV, all the bullshit that's like, you feel like is coming towards you. So it really is, it's, it helped change my life view like my worldview for the better so i agree think positive stuff and it's i'm not like trying to tell you that's a cure to depression that's a whole chemical imbalance thing that i can't cure for you but um if you need help look out there there's 
no matter how down or out you feel, there's always somebody that's going to give a shit uh, on the other end, but think positive. Yeah. And I'll, I'll uh, add on to what he said there and I add on to like almost whatever he said so far is that, um, yeah, there are, there are people, uh, there are cures of depression that you don't need for like a medication. I'm not going to tell anybody to get off medication if you're depressed or whatever, but I think a lot of people are caught in that negative uh, feedback cycle you're talking about. And because of that, um, unfortunately, they're convinced that they have no choice. When it, well, you always have a fucking choice. You always have, you can always, you can choose to not be depressed and it can work over time if that is your ultimate choice. Um, the problem is getting out of that, that feedback cycles. It's really a bitch, get out, especially as you can't see immediate results right away. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with that I, I, I get up every day. I think everybody should have a really good morning ritual. I get up, I have my affirmation. I think right, I write down and I, I do subliminal affirmation. I do everything I possibly can to brainwash my fucking self into believing, pushing myself towards the goals and things that I want to achieve and accomplish. And that's, it's all kind of a brainwashing experience. I think we're all being brainwashed. You just decide and choose what you want to be brainwashed for. Do you want to be brainwashed by news constantly? Do you want to be brainwashed by things you're trying to accomplish in your life? Um, Kind of going with what uh, Kelly said uh, earlier about the evil cabal, the United States government, all that sorts of things. Going back on some of these websites I, I looked at through my uh, studies in the witchcraft and stuff, this is this is where it gets kind of interesting. I talk about evil spirits and, and not messing around with that stuff. There are sites and there's these people, and I can't confirm or deny this. I'm just going off what I've read online and stuff. I dug deep into these sites where they charge not just 10 bucks for like a love spell or something. I'm talking like hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars for some of these spells. And they go deep into saying how they work for these very powerful type celebrities or people. And they say, how do you think they got where they are today? And they kind of insinuate that, uh, insinuate that they've done something with these spells or whatever in, in, the, in dark magic. I'm not saying everybody's done that or whatever. I'm just saying that it's, it's a freaking interesting topic. If you can shift that energy and maybe they are using some black magic, some black energy to get to these places. And any, at the end of the day, what is, what is the... Um, what is the uh, backlash to that? Is there a backlash to that? I don't know. There's a lot of places you go on and they say there's no karma. They always put like no karma on there or we'll do this with our actual witch. And it's just the whole thing about evil spirits and, and using them for your benefit or, or just the Ouija board. It just blows my fucking mind, really. So anyways, uh, that's all I have. And that's all we got for tonight, folks. Um, I'm here sitting here by myself in an old theater again, just after talking about demons. So this would be fun getting out of here in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, the Seattle uh, Space Needle Light Show, that's the prelude to next week's show, which is uh, an alien outer space a conspiracy with Mike Freeze. He's going to detail how um, a, uh, the U.S. government is going to shoot a hologram up into the skies to fake an alien inversion invasion that's next week's paul uh show and we'll see you back here